Welcome to The Music Reel. I'm your host, Nicola Burton. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Kelly Wood. Now, Kelly is the Director for Entertainment, Crew and Sports for the Media, Entertainment and Arts Alliance. Now, that's the MEAA. This organisation is dedicated to the empowerment of Australians' creative of professionals. Kelly, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for talking to me today. It's a pleasure. How are you going in Sydney? Oh, I think um, things are feeling pretty, you know, steady in, in Sydney. We're starting to see some people uh, being able to go back to work with the appropriate kind of safety framework in place. So that's really positive. Um, we're really feeling for all of our, our members and colleagues down in Melbourne, though, at the moment, obviously. So incredibly hard for them. I mean, <laughs> we've, gone, we've gone through our first lockdown. They're going through their second. You know, guys, we're really feeling for you. So, mm. look, I, I wanted to talk to you today about, you know, the job that you've done. I've spoken to Paul, obviously, about the music side. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with the other side. And I, so I wanted to talk about, I guess, what your role is with MEAA, mm -hmm. who you're actually working with, and probably the greatest challenge that you guys are going through right now as a result of these lockdowns. Goodness. Well, let's start with the first thing first. You might have to remind me by the by the time we get to the the other part of the other parts of the questions. Um, so I'm the director of the entertainment crew and sports section. So our members are found in film and TV, uh, particularly in the sort of more scripted areas uh, is is where our membership tends to be concentrated. Um, and as well as that, obviously, like the live performance venues and entertainment venues, uh, particularly in Victoria, is uh, where most we have members all around the country, obviously, but um, a lot in Melbourne in particular. So places like the MCG, um, the Sydney Opera House, um, QPAC that you would be familiar with in Brisbane, uh, to you know, uh, per theatre trust venues and, and the Festival Centre in Adelaide. Our members are all over the country making live performance and events come alive for people. So obviously at the moment it's a pretty tough time for them. Yeah, it is because I guess the thing is that when production doesn't happen, it's not just the people on stage that are affected, it's the, the people behind stage, the front of house, side of stage, and they're the people that have got families, mortgages, small businesses that you don't necessarily see on a red carpet, but they are being so profoundly impacted. So perhaps, you know, could you talk a little bit about what they're going through right now? Oh, goodness. I mean, I think in screen um, there's probably a, some real cause for optimism at the moment um, where we're really seeing the benefit of um you know having effective government dealing with the the pandemic well i mean obviously we've, we've probably part of that is good luck as well you know in australia that we haven't had big outbreaks um so what we're seeing is that you know um screen productions that we're going to shoot in california for example have transferred here so um that has has created an opportunity and then the work that the industry has done um, together, um, including like a lot of input, input from our members on creating the um, COVID safety guidelines for screen, um, means that we can demonstrate that we've thought through all these all those issues and that works uh, productions can be run safely. Like we know how to do it. With you know the the framework is in place, um, and we've had productions um, get back on their feet quite early on. Um, in fact, one of them, one of the few around the world um, that continued shooting through COVID was Children of the Corn. Um, so that was, you know, a huge uh, amount of work from all the people on that production to keep it going uh, and a big commitment from people, in, including, you know, kind of creating their own bubble and being away from their families for a while in the midst of the pandemic. Um, you know, that was obviously a big sacrifice for people, but we had some other productions going back early as well. So I think we're kind of ahead of the game um, in screen and we're seeing a lot more production capacity come back online. So that's great um, for people in screen. Um, for uh, live theatre, it's really, it's, it's almost a bit of a waiting game. I mean, I think that, you know, we did have some... Uh, big employers, uh, um, venues that were looking at um, staging some things sort of around September, no, uh, September, October, like starting to kind of dip their toe back in um, and, and looking at how that would happen. 
Uh, but now kind of with the outbreaks that we've seen, um, those plans have been put on hold a little. Uh, I think people are a little bit more cautious. Although, you know, we have um, in South Australia, there's a, a production going back on. So that's great in Adelaide. Um, but we'll just have to, I think it's, I feel like it's a bit of a waiting game for everyone else around the country. And of course, people are anxious about uh, what the industry will look like when they go back. You know, people that have been living on <clears throat> you know, maybe two or three jobs in the industry, working casually, working freelance, um, whether the hours of work will still be there for them when when maybe we come back with potentially reduced capacity. You know, it, it's a lot of uncertainty at the moment and anxiety, I would say. So when we see, you know, uh, governments actually stepping up and say, yes, we're going to support you, like the, the Victorian government has been doing a great job of that, like letting people know that, they're being heard and that there's some support there for them. Um, I, I think that that's really helpful. It'd be great to see that um, across the country and at the federal level as well. It's huge, isn't it? When you think about, you know, the audience have an appetite to see a live show, a live production, but they don't necessarily know what goes in behind the scenes, all of the logistics yep. just to get that show to happen. And, you know, all of your members, you know, the work they've got to do and then the uncertainty. I mean, it's, I really want this story to be told because if you go out to a live show, you really need to appreciate what these people are going through right now. We need to keep that front and centre. And I guess that's why I also wanted to talk to you about the Great Australian Binge, which is an initiative you guys have been doing. I mean, so the focus really here is let's, you know, make sure we've got great Australian content. So we've got work for our production crew, for our writers, for our, you know, actors, everybody in creative arts. So perhaps... Kelly, could you talk to us a little bit about the Great Australian Binge and what, what that's all about right now? Because I think there's a couple of different things happening. Yeah. Well, the Great Australian Binge is, um, gosh, it's something that we came up with uh, really in response to the pandemic um, because, you know, we were hearing a lot of people talking about how they were, what they would, you know, particularly people who were at home, maybe not working as much as they had um, with more time on their hands and as well as, you know, more more things to worry about. <laughs> um, so they were kind of really re diving into um, the kinds of things that our members make. So whether it's TV shows or, uh, you know, movies or, um, or you know, even, you know, on the media side of our industry, which is not my area, but, you know, the, the reliance on getting that, um, critical information from the media like it, it, it I feel like our we felt that that um, the work that our members did was really becoming such a lifeline for people so we really kind of wanted to get people thinking about that you know what is the the role of of um, screen production in this specific instance but more generally you know what would our lives look like without music um, what would it look like without you know, how, how would we think of Australia if we didn't have things like, you know, Kath and Kim or The Castle or Home and Away or Neighbours or, or Mystery Road as, as reference points, you know? Exactly, exactly. Because how do we tell our story, not just to the rest of the world but also to ourselves? I mean, this has been going on for, God, years. My, my husband's Greek and when he went to school he didn't speak English and he learned to speak English by watching Skippy, right? And a lot of new Australians learn English by watching Skippy. And so, like, it's so important that we've got these stories that we tell and there's so much more. So, okay, so there's a bit of a call to action, Kelly. What can we do to really support this great Australian binge and get people involved so that we can actually get more Australian content? Yeah, well, I might just, um, if there's time, just give a little bit of background of why it's so important that we are thinking about these Australian stories and the, the, how important they are to us and um, uh, the fact that we do need to support them actively, not just kind of, you know, flick on the TV. Um, the, the government is currently uh, reviewing Australian content quotas for commercial broadcasters. Um, and there's, uh, you know, the commercial broadcasters are trying to argue that their obligations to make Australian scripted content, including kids programming, should be lower or in some genres actually eliminated. Um, and, you know, uh, they're, they're putting forward uh, 
the, the fact that the industry has changed so much, people's media consumption has changed so much. And there's some truth to that. Um, but, I mean, we would say it's certainly going too far to say that that means they should do less of it. Um, if anything, people are consuming more media, so we should be seeing more um, of this kind of content. So we're um, wanting the government to uh, not give in to calls for reductions to um, Australian content on commercial broadcasters. But also there's a huge gap there with um, new platforms like Netflix or uh, Stan. There's actually no obligation whatsoever for them to make any kind of Australian drama or documentary or kids programming. So that, that, oh my God. Oh, you didn't know that? No, <laughs> yeah. that's so, outrageous, Kelly. Yeah. So when you switch on Netflix and you see that there isn't very much Australian content there, there's a really good reason for that. Um, that unlike the commercial broadcasters, there's no obligation for them to make it. Um, and, you know, they've made a couple of things here, um, but really, not a significant level. In their library, library, the last uh, research that was done on it that's been made public, they only had 1.6% of Australian content on their platform. And funnily enough, 1% is the level of Australian content that the commercial broadcasters used to have before content obligations came in. So um, that's why this is so important, uh, the Great Australian Binge, and why we're um, you know wanting to talk with the public about it to say, well, you know, we know that, you know, everyone has been relying on their favourite program. So McLeod's Daughters was a huge favourite in the Great Australian Binge. Um, uh, Neighbours, Mystery Road, Kath and Kim, so programs like that. Um, people really, you know, talked about their love for those programs. But, you know, the question is like, well, what, what's the next <laughs> generations of, of that programming that we should be seeing on Netflix? Um, we know that they're capable of making such wonderful, impactful content, um, both drama and documentary, and there's kids' content there too. Um, we would love to see them actually um, having an Australian voice in that, in their new work that's coming through so that we can see the same kinds of things that, that reflect our society. So, so how do we get that to happen? What's, yeah. what's the step? Well, at the moment, the first thing that people did was to vote on what their favourite, most binge-worthy Australian content was. And like I said, McLeod's Daughters was actually the winner. Um, it's got a very uh, long-standing, loyal fan base, uh, which is fantastic. Um, the next step of it, though, is that we've asked those people who participated in that to email their MPs about the fact that they do love Australian content. Uh, TV shows and, and films and how important they are to us as a country and asking their MP to actually step up and be an advocate for Australian um, screen production um, and our stories on screen uh, within the government because the government is really looking at this area now and we don't know what's going to happen. We need uh, voices being raised to say that, you know, we, our, we deserve to see our stories on screen. 100%. So anyone who's watching this can go to greataustralianbinge.com. Yep. And there's a, there is a letter there. I've actually sent a few myself, been circulating. Fantastic. Love but it's, that. it's not enough. We, like we really need tens and thousands, hundreds and thousands of us to do this because we really don't want to be the UK or the US's, you know, poorer cousin. We've got our own culture, our own identity. We yeah. need to tell our own stories. I didn't yeah. realise that about Netflix and Stan. My goodness, I feel like cancelling my subscription right now. Well, we don't want that. I mean, we. I mean, Stan, I've got to say, Stan does have a significantly higher Australian content, and they've been making more work in Australia. And they're, I mean, they're more of an Australian platform they they have come up in australia whereas netflix is sort of a bit of a i mean almost fly in fly out i guess you could say um that, that would be the comparison so stan does do better but i mean it's still the case that there are no obligations on on stan to right. in any australian content whatsoever i think one of the biggest concerns that we have is you know kids content um you know we yes. we can't we just can't exist in a world where we don't have um, where kids don't have access to Australian stories on screen. Like we know how screen based kids are, um, and we need to find a way so that those stories are accessible 
um, and not that, that it's not just cartoons. I mean, the the commercial broadcasters have put forward that you know they're they're providing entertainment for the whole family and citing that kids are, are watching with their families things like you know Australian Ninja Warrior and but they've also cited things like you know The Bachelor and and um, uh, gosh what's that other one is it Paradise Island I, right. I don't know. okay. Sorry. Yeah, so really neat. Yeah, because you've got um, things like so. My my grandchildren love La La's Big Live Band. That's a huge hit. She sort of Tina Harris does that one. Then yeah. I think you've got the. I think ABC does a lot of different Australian like cartoon like Bluey and things like that. But it's yeah. still not enough. There's still like yeah. I mean those and which is not to say that those things aren't incredibly valuable because of course they are. And in fact, like a lot of those travel overseas as well. So that's fantastic. But, um, I mean, it's, I think it's really super important that Australian kids see themselves on TV um, because, yeah. those, you know, <laughs> it's funny. I remember when the, the broadcasters first put that argument forward that, that families were sitting around watching those kinds of programs, including kids, side by side with news reports about how boys have got uh, having all these increasing body image issues, you know. So, I mean, no surprises where those have come from. <laughs> if that's what they're seeing, the representation that they're seeing, and they're not actually seeing Australian kids on screen. So, so we, just think that we really need to do that. It's, it, it is, I guess, like with Skippy, you know, that really old show, that gave kids the ability to see other kids, and that's what we don't necessarily have right now. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so we've, we've got to really change this, Kelly. We've got to contact our MPs. We've got to put it out there. What else can we do as consumers to really support the Australian industry? We have to increase our content. Give us a call to action. <laughs> Another well, one. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing you could really do is to contact your MP, be talking with um, not just your MP, but also the people around you about um, the importance of Australian stories. If you see a great Australian TV program, you know, um, let your friends know about it and get them to watch it, you know. I mean, I, I think that it's really important that the public, the audiences um, are really engaging with what our industry uh, makes and that they're giving feedback as well. Like, you know, there's been a lot of feedback um, in recent years that um, some of our stories weren't diverse enough. Um, so, you know, and we've seen a real response to that as well. So we're starting to see, starting to see better representation. Of course, you know, we, we always need to, to do better and better on those sorts of things. But um, the more audiences engage with those sorts of things and give feedback and, and call for um, something new, then I, I think that there is a real ability to respond to that, particularly now when we have the means of social media to give that feedback so directly. Kelly, what a great conversation. I'm really grateful to you for taking the time to talk to me because I think people need to understand what's on the other side of the television screen and you've really helped us to understand that today. So everyone, I do, I'll put all the links in this post. But Kelly Wood, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. Take care. Thank and you. I'll be sort of watching what you guys are doing over the next couple of months because you're going to be pretty busy by the sound of it. So, yeah, Kelly Wood, thank you for talking to me today. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Kelly.